so I'm Richard, I prepared the document, which is almost 30 pages, so yeah, it's going to be difficult to rush through in five minutes, but I'll try my best so that we can move up to questions. Uh, we, are, we are vigilant, we are a Hong Kong company, we bought a Swiss brand in order to better sell our products. We do IoT, so these are the contacts and, and this is our YouTube channel, we have the videos of our products. This is the photo database, and this is the contact of PR. So I will rush into not the history of the company, but what is IoT, so it's Internet of Things, it's the connection of objects of your life into the Internet. After the Internet gets the data, the, the, our servers uh, is going to process the data in order to push value to you. Uh, can be in healthcare, can be in environment, can be in a remote control, <coughs> and safety, and many things around us. The IoT market. So I've asked my the person that helps me for PR to put as much information as possible. So you'll find a lot of that inside. This is for you, so that you can pick up some data. So we have ten slides of uh, on the market itself. How many billions of connected objects in 2020 compared to today uh, and you have the source every time. The fact that more than two-thirds of consumers plan to buy a connected technology for their homes by 2019. It's a way to say that um, today because everybody is having a phone and is using it for social life, for payment today, they are going into the direction of using their phone in order to control their life and to live a better life. Uh, these are press, press reviews with some sources that I've put for you, uh, some big players and what they say about IoT and their future. You can see that everywhere in the world you have huge companies that were had nothing to do with uh, mobile technology, with IT, with whatever, and today they are shifting their whole strategy into IoT, into connection connecting to consumers, into using phones and so on. So in every statement, if you read the strategic pitch of the new CEOs, every year you can see new companies that have nothing to do with IoT coming into it. So I've put a few that are moving into it. McKinsey, so I've put sources, I've asked to put sources so that you can pick for your articles in there. Um, some estimates and forecast, these are the sources here. You probably know those guys better than I do, but you pick and choose whatever you guys are interested. IDC, Gartner. These are the recent mergers and acquisitions. So some companies are so late into the IoT space that what they do is that they look around and they see who's available for purchase and they just grasp some, uh, some company and buy them. So you have a very interesting example, which is Google buying Nest for three billion dollars. How was that value? I don't know. We don't know. But this is a typical example of a company moving from Google, I mean, a, a search engine, into homes, uh, managing your your heater and uh, and air conditioning bill. So it's it's really a big shift. Cisco, of course, and some acquisition. Samsung, Vodafone, many of them moving it. I'd like to spend a little time about our vision and then I will give you our products so we can rush through them so you know what we do. Our vision is that life is changing today, it's becoming fast and digital. We use our phone more and more every day, the new generation is doing so. So what we want to do in the company is we are an R&D company and we want to create smart, connected and design precision instrument for these new lifestyles that are emerging here in our lives. Oh, talking about uh, innovation and powers, <laughs> yeah, maybe we can, we can use a sequence to prove that, but I don't know. Uh, what, what, what we do is, we have two R&D centers, one in Taipei, one in Shenzhen. Taipei is more about life science, healthcare, wellness. Shenzhen is more about environment. And these are the offices that we are. We are based in Hong Kong. We have a sales office in San Francisco. 
Paris and in Lausanne. Uh, this is this is us. This is me. This is the founders. Um, we are. Uh, we're not early into IoT, but this is really our expertise. So we've been the voice uh, for global IoT at the Bluetooth World Conference, the Bluetooth Conference in Asia, been able to participate with some media, particularly in Europe. So I'm sorry, this is the French. Go on. Yeah. Uh, so she she put the French because that was easier for her. I don't know, but so you have some <laughs> press talking about us. I, I can bring some English one. These are two awards that we won. Let's focus on these two products, maybe. The first one is uh, we won from the French minister a couple of weeks ago uh, the innovation prize from the Paris Game Week. This toothbrush that's here, it has a gyroscope inside, it has a G-sensor, it has a Bluetooth module, and it is connecting to the phone so that the children, every time the children is doing a movement, the phone is correcting the children, telling them this is the right location. Yeah. You're doing good job. <laughs> <laughs> he will, he will give you some time for them. <laughs> How much is that to Brian? Uh, twenty nine ninety nine. Twenty nine US. Yeah. Can you buy this online? You can buy it online uh, in JD, in Timon. Uh, if you are here, JD, Timon, Taobao, and right. so on. Yeah. So uh, we want the best the wearable uh, worn. App. Uh, we won the Hot Beauty product at NACDS, so that's a Boston, very US thing, but important one, drugstore news winner. Uh, so this is, this is one product, this is the one that we sell more, okay? Um, it's the second one that uh, just won yesterday, uh, CES award, uh, is uh, B. So B is a, a medical device. It's, it fits on the insulin pen for the diabetic patients, and it is going to record your insulin injection. You press it, and it fills your logbook, which is a very, very important part of your diabetes management inside your phone. So uh, this this product has been very new, very original. Nobody thought about it, and we know how that. Diabetes is a very, very important disease in the U.S., in India, in China today. So this is really something that we designed, we thought about, we patented last year, and uh, we threw to the market. With a lot of surprising surprise from the market, but it's going very well, and it's, uh, it's winning innovation award because it's just thinking about how a telephone uh, can help a patient through a very simple piece of hardware that is connected. This is the benefits and this is the beauty of Internet of Things. Uh, this is our catalog. So I have one here, it's the paper version. We can rush through our devices, but what we try to do in our strategy is always try to be the first to invent a device. We, we, we want to be the the first going to the market with a great idea, a new idea, something nobody has ever seen. So this one is a Chinese design product. It does the following thing. It's an air purifier, it's Wi-Fi, and on your phone, you can click the air quality that you want. Like, for example, the one that people use a lot is the Zurich Air. So you can choose <laughs> <laughs> your phone. indoor <laughs> air so the quality. Geneva, so you click here, apply, and the machine. The machine with its brain is go and its sensors, it measures the particles in your air. It's going to work silently during the day and it's going to tell you on your phone, you know how many particles you have today? So if you live in Beijing, you're very happy. You say, and the phone you, you are breathing Geneva air today. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So it's always a mix on how technology can help us live a better life and a, and a, in a better environment. This one's rainbow for, for children. So uh, this is the app. I will, I will ship. You, uh, no, no, you no, have no, your address. No, 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 no. Please, because I, I asked my team to prepare samples for today. I always do. No, don't tell them. <laughs> so, so this is this is the app. It's it's really a funny one. Um, well, this is 
this is a award-winning uh, device. Uh, so I used to live in the U.S. in Arizona, so everybody has a pool, and nobody knows that the kids don't want to put their sunscreen, and nobody knows about SPF because you go to Walgreens and there's SPF everywhere, 100, 200, whatever. So we design a floating device which is Wi-Fi, again connected to your Wi-Fi and it's doing in the little bubble here there is a UV sensor, it's measuring the UV and the temperature of the water. What does this do? You are going to choose the color of the skin of your children or yourself and depending on this color of skin it's going to give you the advice and the UV, it gives you the advice of what you have to do today. Which SPF should you choose? to protect your kids when they are going to rush in the pool. So this is a construction, again, very simple tool. This is, a, this is going out in the US in January, and that's, again, a, a piece of hardware that is going to link, uh, um, to prevent uh, uh, disease. For example, in Australia, we know how much the uh, skin cancer has been hitting young kids. You have kids that because they never protected their skin. So this is a typical thing that can help, at least uh, help people understand what, what's, how, why to protect their, uh, their UV from UV. And, uh, and, and it's medically, uh, it, it brings medical data to, to consumer, uh, to, through consumer market. Let's, so we always do a hardware with the, the app connected, right? I have maybe another one. Oh, this one's B, so typically we, we did this device. So it fits on all the pans, the insulin pans of Sanofi, Lili, and Novo Nordisk, which are the, the main manufacturers, the only manufacturers of insulin. So this one's, this one's a new one, so it's coming up in 2015. It's, um, it's Bluetooth and it's measuring the quality of, uh, of the water. So it's, it's, for, it's for pool, for what you drink also at home, but it's also for a lot of different industries that today they have very expensive sensors. Uh, we've tried to buy the best sensors we could throughout the world. We've put it in a very light and simple object. We're pushing the data here and we're trying to tell people how is the quality of what they do, of what they drink. So well, that's a funny one. We did that because um, the, the diabetic patient have to measure the carbs, the carbohydrates they, they eat. So we did a scale, uh, which when you, when you actually measure the weight of your food, uh, you register the food and it's going to go to the uh, US uh, uh, Agriculture Department uh, and take their database of what carbs, what calories, what uh, is the nutritional of each one of the foods. So it goes to the US database, it calculates everything and it tells you uh, what you've been eating and what's inside what you're eating automatically. So if you cook something and uh, you're worried about your health, this scale is going to tell you on your phone exactly the content of what you're so these are some of the devices that we did in 2014, and I have a, a, a catalog of our innovations here. I think that's it on the company. If you have questions, I better answer questions. And this is the this is the catalog if you want to pass it around. Thank you. How many products do you have? So at this moment, those are the ones for sale, but for the water one. Uh, we we are working on. Uh, eight products for 2015 yeah. Yeah. and each product has a new generation coming like the toothbrush now we have the electric toothbrush coming out this one is this one is manual and the electric toothbrush it, it's after seven year old when you have already acquired the right movement and then uh, you go to electric <laughs> and, uh, it's giving you a lot of data of course as parents i didn't show you here but as a parent uh, you can check whether they brush your teeth and how, again, if they are doing on your phone, again, yeah, you can check. Well, that's not the main idea, but uh, in the end, you can see the quality of the movement that they do. Is that something you share with, like, uh, potentially with the dentist as well? 
So uh, the the whole idea, like in medicine, is that whatever you gather as data and you process it, you share it with an uh, expert. We do this. We do this for diabetes, of course, because you share with your nurse or your doctor. Sure. Uh, but for the dentist, we are not arrived that far yet. Uh, we wanted to sell through the dentist because the best way is to have dentists actually uh, recommend the toothbrush. But it's a very difficult market because it's blocked by some brands, you know, that, and it's, you don't have access to a dentist. To, so just Philips has, and that's Colgate. And that. so there are very, very few brands actually in our in our care. So uh, we we abandon that way to to actually access to the market. How big are you both revenue? Like, uh, people like that you can disclose on. Of course, we are around forty-five in total. Yeah, yeah people. What is the makeup of the team? Like the marketing so Mainly pure uh, engineers. Yeah, because we are an R and D company, so we we design, we invent, we work, we test, we do, and it's great to be here for this because you have access both in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, or in Shenzhen. When you need something to build what you're doing in your lab, you just get it in a few hours. So it's really a it's really a great place to invent. And yeah. What about revenues? I, I'm not disclosing uh, revenue yet, but we are starting this year, so you can imagine there is a roundup. We are around uh, less than a million because we're just starting. How many toothbrushes? Like, like, uh, we've time? shipped 15,000 so far. Mostly in geography wise, is there? Europe. Europe, right? But we've, shipped, like we've shipped everywhere. Yeah. But mainly Europe because this is where there's been the communication and This is where we've got the orders so far. Is this is that with all the products, or is it like specific products? No, this is them? just the toothbrush. Right. The other one, so our our air purifiers, we only sell them in China. Uh, we are starting so less than a thousand, but they are online, and then every day we're selling. Uh, the the thing there is that uh, we've done we've tried to work a lot of the design. You've seen that uh, in our mission, we want to do smart, connected, and design objects. So we work a lot on the design because everybody can take a piece of hardware, throw it Bluetooth inside and then invent a bad app. You know, you, you can do that. But we, we're, we're trying to do beautiful things. And uh, as far as the air purifier, so we wanted to move out of that ugly plastic case that I may find here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, moved around, we've done a bamboo design, we've done a colorful design. We're the only one to have a round tube, which is beautiful with a, with a Wi-Fi signal there. Uh, the app is fun. Uh, so we work a lot on design because uh, we think that it's harder now, but in the long run it's, it's, uh, it's better for people, better for consumers, and also for us it's more fun to, to do something which is nice, you're proud of. How would you compare market maturity the US, Europe, and Asia? So I, I'll be I'll be clear on that. Uh, my my pri our priority is China, but we're taking a long time to get in. We didn't want Europe, but we got Europe, <laughs> and uh, we want the US, but it's taking a lot of time because. Uh, Costco, they buy for nothing, and they never. If the customer doesn't want it, they send it back, and then they destroy uh, whatever the customer sends back in the next three years, and so on and so on. So, the U.S. market, unless you have their uh, products in the past, and then you are not a startup, and so on, and you can go through some distributors. But I've not been happy with uh, the way distributors have told us they are going to put our devices. The worst thing is the price, because they, they say, oh, we don't know, maybe, yes, of course, it's a fashion thing. Let's put it $100. I don't want that, because that's not our strategy. We want a mass device. We want all the kids to learn how to brush up, because this is good for them. So they want to, they want to sell way too high. Uh, and we've we've struggled about that. We've lost a lot of orders, but I have to say no because that's not our strategy today. Why is China your priority? Uh, because I live here, because we came here, because we uh, started the company here, and we are a Chinese uh, company.
company. We are here. We bought a, a Swiss brand that's more for marketing and so, but we are a Chinese company, Chinese based. So we came here because um, I think there is a huge opportunity uh, for both sales and manufacture. Um, my short knowledge, like five years of uh, China manufacturers, that they they, they 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 sleep on innovation. They just wait for somebody to innovate. Then we innovate in the U.S. where I used to be, and then you try that you are going to be a manufacturer and you're not, and then the Chinese manufacturers come in and they eat the market. That happened to me in my previous business. So this time what we decided to do is to be here, to be faster, cheaper, uh, stronger, and better innovator than anybody Can you but be being cheaper in China. Though? Sorry? Can you be cheaper? We, today, yeah. our toothbrush is the cheapest in the world and there is no China company that can make it cheaper. It is impossible. This is why we are here. This is why we, we go to Shenzhen, we go to Taiwan, we buy the module one by one, we know the volume, etc. Unless, I mean, there may be a, a company, a Philips, buying a billion module, they'll get a better price, but this is going to be cents. Mm. So it's not possible today. If, it would be a big risk for a company like us to innovate, to be expensive, and then to let go a year, and then, I mean, every, every company in China today uh, manufacturers plants they are looking for what they, what to do they are uh, before they would just do their product and they don't care but today they have empty uh, plants they are looking for new products they are desperate to find new things so you have a uh, I don't know you have kettle companies that do uh, uh, Bluetooth speakers you have a uh, you, you you don't recognize China because they 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 want to fill in their plants so it's a dangerous situation to innovate outside and to let them pick and choose mm -hmm. and, and manufacture for you. So You said it's taken a long time. So how long do you think you need before well, the, you're able to... We have not found uh, the correct partner in China yet. What sort of partners are you looking for? Uh, that sells uh, on JD. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. It's a, it's a struggle. Parties. It's a struggle to get to e-commerce. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Everything is about e-commerce. What about retail? Oh Surely my. retail is still big in China. Yes, but I. It's uh, retail is very complex in the U.S. Um, in in um, in in China, I've seen it's complex too. I mean, you need to go through agents, and then it's 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 a complex way. So. Um, haven't found that way too uh, and we're more focused on mass sales so I'm really about communication and, and being able in our factories to actually put a, a good product on the other side cheap mm -hmm. and then you know how China works very well their e-commerce is really awesome I mean you, yeah. you click you pay you got the you got the product in four hours in your door so it's, it's a beauty really so Retail is, is talk, is um, a lot of different management, I would say, so uh, that's more where we're looking for. Would you have concern about our perception about your quality if your price is so uh, cheap? Yes, we do, and it's a, it's and a bigger... And it's made in China? Yes. Uh, actually, we bought a Swiss brand in order to compensate a little bit that part. I agree with you. Uh, we've been strategizing uh, a lot, we are concerned about that, but it's a strategic uh, choice. Um, at some point, if your product is expensive, it doesn't, you don't do value, and uh, we want to innovate into more, for example, the toothbrush, we have a new electric toothbrush coming, so it will be $10, $15 more expensive, so we'll go up the ladder into the normal prices that you can find today but uh, at this moment we really want it to exist to be present to show what we can do and at what price we can do it and also if you sell too high then you have um, all the all the plants that are empty they will say oh look at this guy maybe he's selling a lot of toothbrush at 50 bucks so I'll do one at 25 bucks you'll get all the competitors come in and throw products under you so I don't want that.
At this moment, we have chosen a different strategy, let's put it that way. But you're right. Are you a marketing expert? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how you would market to the small businesses. How to know how? In Malaysia, we have a lot of small businesses. Yes. What is your strategy to, um, to uh, create the awareness about your company? So, in all the Asian countries, we go through distributors. Uh, it's a mix of uh, signing a distributor, shipping some low MOQ so that they push the, the product locally, and then to get communication on the product, its innovation. To win awards is very important for us, so we try to apply to as many, the good ones, the important ones, and uh, because this, this shows what, what we've done, because it's like a jury and you never know if you're, not, if you're going to win or not. So for us it's important because it's a lot of work, a lot of people that put their heart, their, their brain into products, and this is our way today to show what we are, what we're doing. In, in Malaysia specifically, I cannot answer you how we are going to do it. What, what we, we have contacts and usually a product like this is imported by a distributor and they do a local, a local work of uh, distribution in stores or e-commerce. Mainly Southeast Asia because it's a developing region. So I believe uh, you will have a lot of potential for this thing. I your agree. price is also um, competitive I agree. and it's also of good quality. Yes. Yes, I agree. This is why uh, this is why uh, we are here. Also, this is a very important market for us. When I said China, it's because I'm, I'm I'm very focused on getting up into JD and then and because in a press of a, of a button and then you can you can become from a startup you can become a medium-sized company and it's urgent for us in our strategy to have the plant like the others have, all our neighbors, they have the plant infrastructure, the teams, they can manufacture. We manufacture ourselves, right? We didn't OEM anything. So I need uh, in our strategy this, this, uh, this fast volume in order to get to the level that everybody has in the manufacturing on the other side of the border here. And when we are there, then I can, I can play more into new products and, and so on. This is why I, we are trying to go for fast volume. You, what, you quickly went through uh, some acquisitions, obviously Nest being like number one, most well known. Is that something you see your company going? Uh -huh. uh, also no, because uh, actually we are here because uh, we have a financial plan and our financial plan is to do an IPO here yeah. in Hong Kong in 2017 or 18. So at this moment, I, this, is, this is the plan that we want to do. Uh, so, uh, why? Because I, the group of founders, we've already done companies and sold companies. <coughs> we want to experience uh, the IPO story. I think you get more money when you do an IPO. And I think also what we do is exactly what the Hong Kong market, uh, stock market, is going to be looking for in a couple of years. Because today, is, I mean, banks or uh, well, what goes IPO? I mean, uh, manufacturing, but big manufacturing, uh, uh, banks, financial services, real estate, and so on. But now the economy is shifting more here in this region. So our our product, IPO product, in two years will be exactly what everybody wants. Plus all the China money that wants to have innovation to bring into their plant and their current manufacturing strategy. So I think we have a we have a we have products, consumer products, healthcare products, and we have an IPO product for two years in within two years. So we are building the two products. Have right? you attracted external funding? Not yet. Not yet because uh, we we would like to find good people, not just money. Because money is just money. What what you want to succeed is. Uh, people with you that open market and so on so I mean we have Hong Kong people that 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 uh, can open us the China market that's really what I'm looking for but at the same time I was telling Antoine that we have Dubai money that they want to open us the market for Middle East and uh, many contacts at very very high level 
Dubai is a city similar to Hong Kong. They want to be the smartest city of the world. This is their communication today, exactly like, like Hong Kong. So we have uh, options there, and of course we have Swiss, Swiss money because we we have a we have a very old uh, Swiss brand, and we have an office there, and it may be a, a partner that we could find into, but. We, we haven't found or decided. My wish, and we are working on this here, is to find a Hong Kong partner that opens to us the China market. That's really what I want. What's your biggest bottleneck right now? What's stopping you from selling, let's say, 100,000 toothbrushes? Uh, just ramp up on the fact that the products are new. We are going to see, yes, we have a big booth there. We, are, we have a come up, let's say, of our products that go together with the awards and with the the, the communication that we do about our product, so we're we're just new. So I think we'll have some trouble because we are passing from uh, low quantity to mass market manufacturing. This is a two different ball game, but we have the experience to do that, and that will be a phase where we have to transition well. And this is why we are headquartered here because. I am in the factory every day. This is the biggest challenge, it's uh, quality. Innovation is one thing the lab people are doing, but then you have to produce quality, test, ship, check everything, the color, everything, everything. It's difficult to manufacture in China, it's very difficult. You are, um, you are available in six, um, wait, available. You, you have people in six locations, right? So how big is your team? 45. 45. 45, I'm oh, yeah. sorry. What's this? No. Uh, we are not too many in sales, less than less than 10, the rest are engineers. How do you choose your next market or product to go into <coughs> product to do? Like what criteria do you have? Uh, it's always related to either environment or healthcare or wellness. These are really the two environments where we feel confident into producing uh, uh, interesting valuable objects. This is where we're going. And 2015 looks, uh, looks, looks interesting, looks funny again, and uh, we have a good pipeline. What's the product cycle here from an idea to actually bring? It's very fast because that's what... a week, a month, a year? No, but to build a product we need eight months, nine months. From an idea to actually Yes. What about Dr. Jean? Um, uh, well, obviously, Mr. Mr. Binier, he has market appeal, but how are you going to appeal more to the bigger population? Yeah, w one of the reasons is that we want to do things step by step. That's why this year we're really focusing on Hong Kong. It's a relatively small market uh, that we can get a bigger exposure. And then once the brand is more you know, has a, a bigger awareness, then we can approach other markets. How, how are you, what is your strategy to build your products to small businesses? Um, we want to sell direct to the consumer uh, because we feel that the demand will come from people who want to improve their health. Uh, and we, we don't work through businesses, but we do work through uh, clinics. So, you know, we're approaching doctors, uh, so some of our tests will also, uh, you know, will be offered through clinics. If, for example, a young couple goes to an OB uh, before they get pregnant, they can recommend a carrier test. If you're a cardiologist, you might want to recommend a uh, medication test, depending, depending on the doctor. So from both ways. But, uh, you know, the medical industry is relatively conservative, uh, and we think that the big change will come from consumers. Just from people who want to get, you know, they want to get benefits from, from and want to live healthier from learning about their education benefits mm -hmm. by not doing it. At the same time, we have a, 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 an investment plan and a, and a structured financial mm -hmm. plan until 2018 where we have an IPO objective and so on. So the, 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 the pick and go to crowdfunding capturing 50,000 or 100,000 bucks and then getting the communication out of it, we chose not to do that because mm -hmm. that's not the profile of company that we want to build. Um, 
it's great though. Uh, we have a lot of uh, inventors, friends, and so on that go through that because it really pushes our products out there. Um, we chose not to do that. It's just a, a tactical uh, financial mm -hmm. planning, and it's, this is not our way of working. Mm -hmm. I would say. What about yourself? Um, I think it's a, it's a fantastic idea. Uh, I think this is something we might uh, try at like one product. Mm. You know, help us develop, uh, for example, a package for skin. Mm. Uh, you want to find out if you're going to stay young, how is your collagen degenerates, things like that. And um, um, yeah. come in early, of course. I think yeah. I think this is something that you know, it's a nice platform to get more exposure and get people a little bit more engaged with your product. Mm. So that's always nice, you know, we always want to find ways to get people more engaged with your products. Or did so, actually talk about it. Yeah. We, we talked about it. We yeah, we talked, talked about, about it. We haven't, we haven't actually done it. Actually, you pre-order a prototype and then you pre-order the first mm. uh, thousand product and yeah. then there is a product. Our, this is the contrary of what we do. Mm. Uh, there is no pre-order, nothing. There is just, <coughs> here's a product, and then everybody's, ah, again, that product, that product that doesn't exist, that's not there, and so mm. on. It's not true. We are the only one that are selling this. Before, whoever, has, but the, for example, Philips a year ago, I said, we, we are doing a smart toothbrush, and then all the press goes, oh, great, wonderful, show us, because yeah, nothing. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi, up your Wi-Fi of Philips a year ago, mm -hmm. and EFI in Berlin, we're doing this, etc. And then, nothing on the market. Mm -hmm. So, we, we want to do the contrary uh, of that. We just, like, surprise everybody. Mm -hmm. We did that on B, the diabetes uh, tracker. Mm -hmm. Like, you talk, you talk, and then everybody says, oh, good idea, yes, no, stop. no. Just should do, put your money, and then put the product there. And then everybody's like, oh, wow, what? going on. So it's a tactical move, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So, uh, any more questions? Sun? Okay, thank you. Uh, wonderful. No, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you.